Hi, and welcome to the 2019 Paper 1, uh, the question 6 of the Leaving Cert Ordinary Level. As usual, if you want a copy of the set notes I'm working on, uh, please email me at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address should be in the description below. And I suggest pausing the video here, just having a go, and if you can still come back and have a look and see if I can help. So this first part here uh, is question 6, part A is worth 10 marks. And it says here, solve the following inequality. Now, in, most people don't like inequalities. We can often treat them just as if it was an equal sign. There's only a few circumstances where that you know, doesn't work as a strategy. The same for all x values that are real numbers. So x is the element of r. Basically means every number. Okay, And show your solution on the number line below. So when you're trying to plot a number line, there's ways of doing it. So that's when they tell you what type of X value it is. If it's a natural number, it's the positive of whole numbers. If it's a integer Z number, it's positive or negative whole numbers. So they might only have, like they might have filled in just, just on the dot. They won't have filled in anything in between. Okay. And a real number, when we fill in whatever it is, they're going to have a heavy line and kind of filling in all the points. Okay. So it could be, yeah. Uh, one and a half, it could be two and a half, it could be one and a third, it could be any number um, on that, that segment. We're trying to find out well, what are the x values. So we're going to take this little um, inequality here and solve it. Now, yes, the answer is done here. So I'm going to first thing I've written it out. Then I'm going to do what it says in the tin, I'm going to remove brackets. So do that by multiplication. Two trees is six, two by negative x, so plus by minus is minus, two by x is two x. Then you want to solve it, so let's bring the six across. Okay, so the six is positive on the left, becomes negative on the right. Okay, do that sum. So negative two x is less than or equal to eight take six, which is two. Now in this scenario, okay, I want to change the sign in front of the x because I don't want negative two. So basically I'm multiplying across by a negative one. If you multiply across by a negative number, the direction of the inequality has to change. Uh, it's this, in a sense, it's equivalent of me bringing the 2x over here. If I did that, it'd be 2x, okay, it would change from negative to positive going across the inequality. And then the 2, if we brought the other side, would become negative 2. Okay, so it's one way of, of getting rid of the negative and rid of the x. Okay, and if you see here, the 2x is greater than negative 2, 2x is greater than negative 2. So it's the same thing. I'm choosing to do it here by multiplying across by a negative 1. So negative 1 by negative 2x is positive 2x. Negative 1 by positive 2 is negative 2. So it's basically achieved the same thing. Now, the answer is 2 times some number gives negative 2. The number must be negative 1. Or I could bring the 2 across. It was multiplied on the left, becomes divided on the right. And I'd end up with minus 2 divided by 2, which would be the same thing as negative 1. So that's my answer. Okay. Um, now I need to plot that on the number line. Okay. So you're looking at x is bigger than negative 1, but it's every number bigger than negative 1. Now, it doesn't say equal to negative 1. So we draw a circle saying that the number is not actually negative 1, but it's every number bigger than that. Okay. So I fill the heavy line in, and I write, I suppose, the arrow, because it's going on to infinity and beyond. Well, I'm a nerd. So that's part A. Now part B here is an index equation or index problem. We're again asked to solve for x, so it is an equation. We've got a huge 15 marks going on here. A lot of people find these tricky, um, but when I, once I see powers, um, I start thinking in terms of certain strategies. One of them is knowing my powers of numbers, so knowing the powers of 2, okay, even though it won't be a situation here, but the powers of 3, Powers of maybe even four, five, and six is probably more than enough um, to know. The two to the power of zero is one. Okay, two to the power of one is two. Two to the power of two is four. And you, you know, just knowing what they are. Okay, sometimes it's handy to write them down. But once you get to a point, I may have done on the next page. Okay, I didn't. But if I realize that two to the power of six is the same thing as sixty-four, I can swap them. Once I've done that, okay, I have the two base numbers the same. 
I can focus entirely on the powers. Yeah, I can equate them. So I'm equating the powers. 2x minus 1 is the same, is equivalent to 6. That's what that statement here is saying. And that's an equation of one unknown. Let's solve it. Bring the 1 across, becomes positive. 2x is equal, to, is equal to 6 plus 1, which is 7. So 2x equals 7. So if I bring the 2 across, it was multiplied on the left, becomes divided on the right. I end up with x equals 7 over 2. That's it. I found x. So deceptively simple considering the number of marks, but you on the exam day wouldn't know what the marks are going to end up being um, in the marking conferences. So, yeah, it, it, you're trying to, I suppose, in a sense, get anything in terms of an attempt and then try to build on that to get as many marks as possible. Right, so that should be everything for question six. Okay, and it is. So thanks very much and see you on question seven.